Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Wednesday to you guys. Happy first day of May. Can you believe we're in the fifth month of the year already? Crazy, right? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey there, Harpy Sherry, Harpy Alicia, Harpy DJ, Harpy Alice, Harpy Yvette, Harpy Bernice, Harpy Sabrina, Harpy Lisa. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you all. Welcome to the Gathering of Hearts on this morning. I am Regina Banks, your GPS to wholeness, aka I am the heart gatherer. I pray that you all received sweet sleep on last night and that you woke up with bells and whistles on, ready to take on this new day, right? The first day of May. So good morning, good morning, good morning again to you. And your daily dosage this morning is what we have been talking about for the last two days, <clears throat> excuse me, live to see another day, part three. Live to see another day, part three. Hey, Heartbeat Elaine and Heartbeat Donald, Heartbeat Troy, Heartbeat Eva, Heartbeat Juanita, good morning to you guys. Live to see another day, part three. So yesterday when we stopped, we were talking about, we, we went to our, um, what am I trying to say? Foundation scripture, Psalm 90, verse 12. In the voice translation, it says, teach us to number our days so that we may truly live and achieve wisdom. And the contemporary English version says it like this, teach us to use wisely all the time we have. And so we concentrated on using the time wisely that we have. And we got into procrastination and how um, we should never allow anger to go into the next day because when we procrastinate and we don't deal with that particular issue or that particular emotion, that we allow it to fester into another day. And so we don't get to live for that new day because we've brought that old day into it and we've allowed the enemy to really technically come on into our homes, into our lives, take a seat. And from that emotion, that leads to another emotion, which leads to us actually participating in sin. Remember, it says to be angry, but sin not. So when we don't get a hold of procrastination, it leads us into a life of sin or it can lead into a life of sin. And so today I want to look at... um. Matthew chapter 25 verse um, in the Passion Translation. And it is, this is the parable of the 10 virgins. And here again, what happens when we don't make what God has called us to do, when we don't make God a priority, again, procrastinating, not doing the things that we need to do. This is what happens. And so we have got to live to see another day, which means we've got to be productive in the day that God has given us. You know, we say this is the day. The Bible tells us this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It goes on to say, we beseech you, O Father, save now, send prosperity now. And so when we rejoice in this new day. We're excited about it. So let's be productive in this new day that God has given us. And so the pericope of scripture, I'm, I'm starting in verse one. Again, Matthew 25, reading it in the Passion Translation, and it's the parable of the 10 virgins. It says this, when my coming draws near, heaven's kingdom realm can be compared to 10 maidens who took their oil lamps and went outside to meet the bridegroom and his and his bride. Five of them were foolish and ill prepared, for they took no extra oil for their lamps. Um, then it says this: five of them were wise, for they took flask of olive oil with their lamps. When the bridegroom didn't come, when they expected. They all grew drowsy and fell asleep. Then suddenly, in the middle of the night, they were awakened by the shout, get up, the bridegroom is here, come out and have an encounter with him. So all the girls got up and trimmed their lamps, but the foolish ones were running out of oil. So they said to the five wise ones, share your oil with us, because our lamps are going out. We can't, they replied. 
We don't have enough for all of us. You'll have to go and buy some for yourselves. While the five girls were out buying oil, the bridegroom appeared. Those who were ready and waiting were escorted inside with him and the wedding party to, to enjoy the feast. And then the door was locked. Hey, Van, I ain't get to see you on Sunday. Good morning. Um, then the door was locked. Later, the five foolish girls came running up to the door and pleaded, Lord, Lord, let us come in. But he called back, go away. Do I know you? I can assure you, I don't even know you. And so when we look at this parable of the 10 virgins, we see right off the giddy up, we've got to stay ready. We've got to stay prepared. We've got to live to see another day. And so we've got to be prepared for that next day. So it says they all had the same opportunity, right? They all were presented with the same thing. Some came prepared, some didn't. It says there were five wise ones and then there were five foolish ones. And so I ask you on today, which side of this um, what do you fall on? Would you fall on the side that is wise? Wise, or would you fall on the side that is foolish? Are you prepared for the next day? Are you prepared when God calls your name and says he's ready to put you on center stage? Are you ready? And so you've got to make sure that you live in a way that it keeps you ready for the next day. Here's the thing. It says this. It says, um, he replied, go away. Do I know you? I can assure you, I don't even know you. How are you living your life? Are you living your life where you can be recognized by heaven, where you can be recognized by God, where Jesus recognized you, where the Holy Spirit recognized you? Are you living in a way where, you know, there's always praise coming from you? You're always in a place of worship. And so we've got to make sure that we live to see another day, that we are prepared for whatever God calls us up to do, that we won't be called upon and we're not ready, that when God calls us to do something that he's already prearranged and predestined in our lives, that he won't find us like these foolish virgins where they didn't have enough, where they're asking someone else. Do you understand that you can't ask somebody else for their anointing? You've got to have your own anointing. How do I have my own? You've got to continually praise. You've got to always have a worship on your lips. You've got to meditate on the word of God. You've got to always exhibit the fruit of the spirit. How do I do that? I stay in the presence of God. And so I've got to actively and intentionally do the great commission that I'm always out there telling people to come in and understand who God is, that I'm always telling somebody that he is Lord, that I'm compelling them to come um, this is how I do this. Not only am I praying, not only am I worship, not only am I meditating on the word of God, but I always make time to pray that this is what I do. I'm always communicating with God. And so you've got to make sure my, your life is you, you live your life in such a way that someone asks you, what must I do to know Jesus? That it is apparent, that it is obvious that you you know Jesus, that Jesus is a part of your life. And so as we continue on to live, to see another day, we've got to live in this day that God has given us. We've got to be productive. Again, we've got to do the great commission. We've got to go out into the hedges and the highways and compel them to come. Do you understand that there are some people who are never coming back to church? Well, we've got to go out and take church to them. We've got to live to see another day, but our lives have got to resemble Jesus so that when we show up in front of them, that they can see the Jesus in us when they see us. They can hear the Jesus in us when we speak. This is how I live to see another day. I stay prepared. 
I stay ready for whenever God calls me. I'm going to be on the side where I'm ready. When he appears, I'm ready to come on in. I'm ready to be escorted by him. I'm not going to be unprepared. Listen, they procrastinated. They didn't have enough oil. They knew the bridegroom was coming. They didn't go and get the oil. Why? Because they procrastinated. They weren't serious about what was really happening. So when it happened, now they're like, can we get yours? Can we get some of yours? No, we've got to stay prepared. Let's not be like the foolish virgins, but let's be like the wise ones. Always ready, always prepared that whenever God calls upon us to do anything, which is a privilege to be used in the kingdom of God, whenever he calls us, we will be ready. This is how we live to see another day. Hey, listen, if you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel already, please do so because there you can find all of your dosages in one place. Follow me on social media platforms. God wants me whole. Visit the website, godwantsmewhole.org. You know how we do this thing. Come on, let's say it together. Say, God wants me whole and I am. Again, I'm Regina Banks, your GPS to wholeness, aka I'm the heart gatherer. Make sure you go out there, have a spec while amazing day. Look out for falling blessings because they are falling all around you. And if you can join us tonight on Walking in Wholeness Wednesday, need the Zoom credentials, email us at info at godwantsmewhole.org. Again, make it spec while amazing. And ladies, 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 make sure you are watching your social media platforms on today because we are rolling out something exciting. You want to just pay attention to social media. God wants me whole on today. Something exciting is about to be announced. Again, spec while amazing day to you. Love you guys a bunch and I'll see you right back here tomorrow morning. Also know that tomorrow is National Prayer Day. So make sure that you are ready for that in the morning. National Prayer Day in the morning. Last closing, last benediction. Love you guys a bunch. Make it spec while amazing. And I'll see you right back here tomorrow morning as we continue on in. Live to see another day. See you in the morning.